J and STL. And for those who don't understand my pronunciation, it's like this, OBJ or STL. Mm -hmm. One or two. Um, they're uh, basically when you export your file, your design from this, you can see that this is already a mesh. It has all this extra nonsense geometry. So uh, that's really easy for the printer to understand the prints, but it's really hard to edit. So if you want to change a file like this, you're going to have to start with the email first. So with, if you download a file like this yeah. and you want to change it to a wider yeah. thing, you can see all this nonsense geometry in here. So it will be cleaning up first before you can change it. Um, so when you design your own things, uh, like if you design it in Rhino, also save the Rhino version. Don't rely on just keeping the STL. The Keep the original, good thing. Um, um, also, these computers in general, if you go extremely high details with these computers, they're not render farms, so your computer is going to slow down. And um, programs can crash on it, or you can open your file later on. So that's like for if you're gonna go like really complex architecture, building a house, whatever. The computers we have are not made for that. <laughs> Just so you know, uh, if you want to do things like that, do that on your own computer. <laughs> if you can at least make that work, we can connect your computer to the printer, and it will be fine. Um, so all I want is either an OBJ or an STL. Um, basically, I can check how it looks in here. I just switch this to perspective so I can get the solid version. And well, this looks like a closed shape. You can use Rhino actually to inspect the elements to figure out if there are any issues. Uh, I'm just selecting my objects and say export selected and let's name it, name it uh, demo and uh, STL is fine or OBJ also fine. And uh, general notes, uh, Icelandic characters are not a good thing in computer files. Uh, programs don't like it, computers don't like it, machines don't like it. So keep Icelandic characters out of files. And save. Well, from Rhino you get a lot of export settings. I just use the default ones. Yeah. Did you send the STL file to the computer? Yeah. I just saved it on the desktop. That's all I did. Yeah, yeah. I think Inka just sent the. Uh... Oh, it's, well, now I have another one. Yeah, okay. <laughs> it doesn't matter. It was an STL file, right? Yeah. yeah. So. Um, for printing, we use uh, MakerWare Desktop. This is open source, so if you go to the internet, type in MakerWare Desktop, you can just follow the download button. Um, this is not an editor, this is just to check how big your print is, what the printing time is, and to export to G code for Google. Um, when you have exported your file from this, the G code the file, you can't open it anymore. So uh, if you just save the G code, I cannot check what the settings are. Yeah. Okay, so just to get used to this, um, you can either just add a file or clicking and dragging works as well. The first time you install this program, uh, you do need to tell it which driver we're working with, which is the same as our printer, Replicator 2. If we get the other machine working again, you do need to change this to the other one if you want to export for that one. It's just going to devices, 
and then select the device. Um, we work with the two, and the broken one is the two X. Um, then you have four happy buttons here. Um, the arrows to click on the object and move it around over the surface. And the rotating one to rotate and the blocks to scale. If you click on the button again, you get the detailed menu to do it in a more controlled way. Main thing I want to check is that your object is flat on the surface. If Let's say this is my object and this is my surface. If my object is like this and you export your file, the printer will make support to actually create a floating object for you, which is very impractical. So you, you lay this flat, so is that the... Um, you have two options, like if you're... Um, if, you're, if the bed is like this and your object is like this, you say lay flat, it will put it back like this. And the other button under skill, under, under the arrows, is you can set it on the platform. So if it's hovering, it will go back down and you can click on center to make it go to the center. So, uh, basic options. Um, interesting one is for you guys the button with called settings. Um, you have quick and custom. First, talking about the quick, um, you have three types of quality. Just shortly repeating what it is. I'm going to show you guys two examples. Yeah. 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 Printing is a slow process. Um, if you print in a low resolution, the machine, the layers are still visible. And if you print in a high quality, it brings the layers a lot closer together, and then you get smooth results. And medium is somewhere in between two. Uh, main difference is time. This is 20 minutes, this one is an hour. So same object, it just needs more time to paint layers. Now the third example is what we can manage with the 2X, which is broken now. This is an ABS print, and this is a low quality print, so you can compare these two. And if you were wondering, I marked them on the bottom. <laughs> so take a time for you guys, if you want to see. Yeah. Thank you for the day. Yeah. Help. So this is like another interesting example print in cloud. I like to see in time and resolution and quality, things like that. Um, so that's just selecting these. And then the second thing is support and rafts. Um, getting a second example. Design. This is something you can turn on in the driver, though um, if you want to design them, some software do give you the option. If I remember correct, actually the Mesh Mixer gives you the option of designing your own supports. Um, what it means is if you print something with uh, a very uh, low radius, there is a moment where the machine cannot print layers stacking upon each other, so it creates these extra columns to keep the print from falling off. And then this is a raft, because the columns are so small, it barely touches the platform, so it needs this raft to keep the columns from falling off. And depending on your object, I would say uh, by default keep them up, only use them when necessary because this takes time, you can just take, break it off and clean it again. And which setting is that? These two yeah. little markers. Yeah. Raft is the bottom, 
Yeah. And then support are the little columns. Okay. So you keep them on? No, it just oh. makes sense. Like when I'm printing my frog, I yeah. print it with no support on the left. Um, because this is a, a nice angle, uh, it did not need it at all. So I get a really nice print out of it with smooth sides and all the sides. Okay. But with the bird, my bird will topple over. So, so it really depends on what you are printing, whether or not you have to use it. Yeah. So another performance test, if you have an object like this, print it with supports and print it without supports and see what happens. <laughs> I guess what we can do with the overhang Exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's also good to see if, if you like do the test, then, then you need, if you go over 70, you can see, oh yeah, I need support in the rafts. So how is having a support with no rafts? Um, well, if you look at this guy, but I maybe have a better example, but this one is printed without the rafts, but with the supports. So in this case we have luck and it went okay. Like sometimes if I have guys that like have the shirt a little bit more towards that, then the whole raft is not necessary because the support is leaning on its own. And then you can just, like with this, this is just a matter of cleaning off the table. Um, then we have the layer height. Um, like when you are printing things that bend, like the, the, the foldable thingy I showed you guys, yeah. then it is interesting to mess around with the layer height. Like you're printing something that needs to move and needs to maybe be detached. Um, by default, I would say just leave it to default, but there's something you can mess around with depending on what you design. Yeah. Makes sense, like how close it's printing the layers together. So, I think that is a better translation. Yeah, yeah. there is layer thickness. Yes. Um, then the infill, uh, it doesn't print out the object in full plastic. It prints it with a little honeycomb on the inside. Um, I'll probably have another example there. <laughs> with no, there is one with no head. Yes, exactly, like that. Mm -hmm. So with the infill, if you would uh, set it to zero, you just get a print with a hollow one which will mean it's really fragile. So if you're printing something with a lot of detail, I will not recommend it because it will probably collapse on the top. Because it has nothing to support. The little structures like the you have to the inside, that's just the machine moving with the plastic. Yeah. That's basically sloppy machine movement. Okay. Um, so you can mess around with the number uh, to control how much honeycomb you get on the inside. Mm -hmm. If you can get the little blue block that is there. Uh, no, there's a full blue one. No, almost. Yes, <laughs> that one. So this is printed with a machine we had to borrow. So it's not a honeycomb, but it's uh, yeah similar. Yep. But the interesting thing is, mathematical shape with a strong structure on the inside, this can hold my weight. Do it. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> I will not be able to get it flat. Oh, wow. So it's very small. Yeah, and even yeah. on the edge. So you yeah, can, it's just you like can. how cardboard works. Yeah. yeah. There are structural and yeah. Exactly. They have uh, honeycombs which we use on planes. Yes. You won't believe how thin it is. So it's like this thick, but you can just. So, printing in full plastic does not have to be the answer to get a strong object. I would not recommend standing on my frog, though. No. But let it be obvious. But like the uh, not that the shirt is in one piece, mm. we were just thinking, I was thinking about it. You put it on the table and you can move all the same. All the same time, you can move up down the table and adjust it. Yeah. So. 
So how strong is that little box? Um, I, I do not have a number for you, but uh, if you have like weights, I, I would love to test like, can we get it flat? I have a lifter. <laughs> no, why well, not like a, make a pressure test? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. just yeah. print out the second one. I like my example. Okay, yes. Yeah. And then but you have yeah. another performance test. Yeah, right. Yeah. So I have an industrial scale. We can, we can, can, we can go at Borkerhofskola and, and there's a, a, a mounted car. Uh, we can try it there. They hope. Um, then, uh, so uh, physics, um, if you would like print something out, something really thin. Um, I'm sorry, I'm going to get more examples. <laughs> Um, another performance test, printing out things really thin, means things become flexible and things become stretchy. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, I do not know the exact answer, but you could like do performance tests like how stretchy can we get it before it breaks. Mm -hmm. Exactly. You can also print out things that are connected in one piece, like uh, 15 points. Um, so uh, this is like the original demo that came with the machine. Um, if you look on the videos, you can see how it's building it up. Uh, it's basically designed all the chains at an angle. So in the machine. And uh, also another interesting thing is you can also print out things that can screw together. Uh, if you put it straight on. Here's another one. So if that would be ABS plastic, you would use the acetate vapor, then it would probably be easier to screw on. So another performance test, like uh, how if you're interested for your project in connections and screwing parts, like how small, how big, what do you need to design to make it work? There's just all I'm shooting ideas and you guys pick what is interesting. Um, then the final bit, what we're seeing here is the number of shells. Meaning, uh, when you saw my rings, one of the rings had a split line. Those were basically two shells. So, meaning the, the, the outer surface is been printed in two layers to build the surface. Make sense? No, I don't get it. So, so it's like it's like the board thing? Yes. yes. Boss will probably correct me if I'm shouting wrong things here, but this yeah. is like... It's like more thickness. It's like the, the outer edge. Yeah. It's like, it's like this one, you know. The cover. This, the number now is two, so it will print out two uh, covers to make the outer surface of the object. Okay. It will go around twice 